Bray Wyatt would make amends tonight in a promo during SmackDown. Really, really cool. He was interrupted by LA Knight after the headbutt heard around the world last week. It looked like we would get a handshake. Nope. LA Knight slapped Bray Wyatt. But interestingly, Bray tried to fight off the demons. He even offered a handshake. Very cool. Until LA Knight slapped him again. Oh boy. As LA Knight was leaving, you got a flash of Uncle Howdy on the Tron behind him. Obviously, we talked the other week about, is this a sign of Bray's anger? And, well, Bray looked pretty angry to me. I think LA Knight might have effed up. I I'm just going to put it out there. I don't know what the hell is going to happen. Survivor Series, maybe? Interestingly, though, in the background of this segment, you see Bray arguing with himself. Or is he meant to be arguing with someone else? Is someone else behind those containers? I don't know, man. Really, really cool. But just a random thought, okay? Bray Wyatt makes amends. That's what this segment was booked as. Does that not remind you of, I'm really sorry for what I did? Like, that was in the lyrics of the Fiend's theme song? S spoken by Bray Wyatt himself. I mean, could that be a flashback? But as LA Knight was leaving, okay, this is where things got really crazy. There was a mask in the background of the darkness in the doorway. Bray's new mask, anyone? And of course, it wouldn't end there. R.I.P. LA Knight. He literally got buried under God knows what. Loads of stuff was thrown on top of him. God knows what happened. I am so into this. What a way to tell a story. There might have to be a second video on this. This is Things You Might Have Missed from Friday Night Smackdown. Make sure you hit the like button. And if you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button too. We started off Friday Night Smackdown with the Brawling Brutes and Drew McIntyre. But did you spot Drew McIntyre go full Dragon Ball Super Saiyan? Like, that was a cool entrance. I like that more than the sword, if I'm honest. I really appreciate WWE giving some backstory to this. We know Drew and Sheamus are bitter rivals, but they talked about mutual respect. Sheamus you know, broke the fourth wall and talked about Drew being the best man for his wedding because he respects him over this 15-year rivalry. Honestly, great storytelling. Gives a reason why they're now a team. They also, really cool, really cool. They gave Butch the War Games announcement. I love that. Sami Zayn would then come out. The honorary Oos would be very confident. And Sheamus would end the promo by teasing the fifth man saying that it would be someone Sammy doesn't expect. But from this promo, I now need this match. Sammy Zayn versus Drew McIntyre. Brutie versus Usi. Book it, Triple H. I really liked how the Usos were basically confronting Karrion Cross. Obviously, the segment was set up for Bray Wyatt, but it was all about, are you the fifth man? I like that. They should be worried. They want to find out who it is. That was a really nice touch by WWE. There was also a really cool moment when Sami Zayn was making his entrance that Wade Barrett pointed out about someone will have a 20-minute numbers advantage. And we find out who that is next week as Drew and Sheamus team up to take on the Usos in an advantage match. So the winner of that match gets the numbers advantage as you enter war games. That's really cool. Can't wait for that. That, as Sheamus would say... Is going to be a banger. Just like the main event of Butch versus Sami Zayn. And of course Butch winning it. Can we start singing It's Coming Home for Butch? Can that be a thing please UK fans? Of course it was Kevin Owens. Who came out at the end. The fifth man. Confronting Roman Reigns. And the stare down with Sami Zayn. What happens in war games? Does Sami turn? Does KO turn? Do they just not enter? Something is going to happen. I cannot wait. Can you believe Survivor Series is next Saturday? In the World Cup, we had Mustafa Ali versus Ricochet. Of course, Ali suffering the injury that he sustained on Raw. Of course, he was filling in for Rey Mysterio, who was also injured. Bit weird. But nonetheless, this was a really good match to kick off the matches for SmackDown. Love this. The ending. Ricochet from the top rope. A shooting star press to a standing Mustafa Ali, allowing Ricochet to pick up the dub. 
And I love this moment at the end. Sitting on the ring apron, showing a sign of respect. Flashbacks for Ricochet and Ali. Really cool little thing. Of course, there's a lot of history between the two. I honestly could watch these two wrestle every single week and still be happy. The way they innovate, really, really cool. But we now know it will be Braun Strowman versus Ricochet. Nice knowing you, Rick. We have to talk about Mad Cat Moss, okay? This guy has gone from the 24-7 championship to tag teaming with Baron Corbin to now an on-air partnership with his real-life girlfriend, Emma. Dude is winning in life, but not in the ring just yet. Of course, Cross beat Mad Cat tonight with a little assistance from Scarlet Bordeaux. Now, interestingly, Emma would come to the ring to help Mad Cat after the match beat down. But does this mean we're setting up a mixed tag? Are we going to get Cross and Scarlet versus Emma and Mad Cat? I don't think, if I remember, that Scarlet's ever wrestled in WWE. She's a very talented wrestler, just not in WWE. I can see Triple H, though, making this a thing. I love this. The New Day were confronted by Imperium. And of course, yeah, I love this. Kofi Kingston likened Gunther to Lurch from the Adams Family. Oh my God. <laughs> but of course, the New Day had to find themselves a tag team partner for six-man tag team action. And they did. They found themselves Big B. Big Braun Strowman, baby. And with the whole World Cup thing leading to the winner getting a shot at the Intercontinental Championship, I kind of feel like we're definitely getting Braun Strowman winning the World Cup and Braun Strowman versus Gunther in the future from this, right? The official poster for WWE Elimination Chamber is out now, and so are tickets. They are on sale if you're in Montreal. Go and buy them. And also WrestleMania Week tickets are on sale now. Get the hype started pre-Christmas. But I want to end this video by paying a 10-second tribute to LA Knight. So I will stay silent for 10 whole seconds. Not gonna lie, that was the easiest 10 second of content I've ever made and LA Knight definitely got what he deserves, so. Eh. Brilliant show for SmackDown tonight, really enjoyed it. I would honestly give it a nine out of 10. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button, turn on those notifications. You'll never miss another upload. Like the video, share the video, and I'll see you as always next time. Peace.